Hey guys, uh, I'm Roshan and uh, this will hopefully be a series or a start to a series of uh, videos uh, called the Through Apathologist Eyes whereby I am thinking about starting a series where uh, the whole thing will be like how a case comes to a pathologist and the pathologist uh, looks at the case history and goes about the case, looks at the microscope and comes to a diagnosis. So that is the idea. And first I have to say that I will be a little bit off the camera because this microscope will be covering half of my face uh, since the microphone is here and uh, if I come to the front of the camera then the uh, audio quality won't be that great. So I will be uh, kind of a little bit out of the camera or behind the microscope uh, lens or uh, the microscope. So I think that won't be a big issue. So this is basically a case of uh, I think 40 year old uh, lady who had a a thyroid swelling or a neck swelling if you will and so one good thing about thyroid lesions is that they usually get diagnosed fast at least at this age in modern age because thyroid uh, it is a kind of very much a visualizable area of the body and people notice the neck very easily and usually your spouse or your friends will tell that you have some kind of swelling in the neck and that is why thyroid lesions get um, uh, get that uh, noticed fast and uh, hopefully gets uh, diagnosed fast. And since uh, they get diagnosed fast, uh, one good thing about it is if there is any carcinoma at all, uh, they get usually diagnosed at an earlier stage, which is a very good thing for the patient. And also, some of the most of the carcinomas are not that kind of uh, lethal ones, except uh, maybe anaplastic such kind. So this is a case of a 40 year old, uh, 40 some year old lady who had a neck swelling which was incidentally detected and on ultrasound it was found to be a solitary nodule and there was a peripheral calcification and they had kind of suspicion uh, and they graded it uh, with Terard's grading as a radiology grade is done and they had suspicion of a, a carcinoma and they had suggested FNAC correlation. So, I'll be going through the papillary carcinoma uh, with uh, FNAC. This means uh, this case will be going uh, will be dealt with by FNAC slide. And what you're seeing right now is an FNAC slide of that lesion, and uh, and if you look at it, that what you see here. This these are called papillae. So these are called papillae. What are papillae? Papillae are finger-like projections, finger-like structures, finger-like structures with a core. Suppose this is my hand is a finger-like. This hand has a cytoskeleton called a skeleton structure is bone structure is there. And on that we have skin. Suppose it's a finger. So this kind of a structure is called papillae. It has a fibrovascular core, and on top of that core, they have epithelial cells. So a core, a fibrovascular core with epithelial cell on top, that is called a papillae, which looks like a finger. So if you look at this low power itself, you can see many papillary-like structures. And first thing, more more importantly, if you look, uh, if you if you see it is at the uh, low power, what you come to notice is that it is a very kind of cellular aspirate. So coming to that, it is an aspirate. So what is a FNAC? Fine needle aspiration cytology. Fine needle aspiration cytology is a very easy kind of office procedure by which uh, any swelling can be aspirated with a needle, a syringe, and it can be smeared onto a glass slide. And once that is smeared onto a glass slide, uh, it can be stained. And after staining, it kind of looks like this. So uh, this uh, smear that can be stained with uh, pap smear or whatever, and uh, once that's stained, uh, once the slide is stained, you can watch, you can put it under a microscope and see the cells. So you are looking basically at the individual cells and that is why it is called cytology and you are using a fine needle. So it's called fine needle and you use a syringe to aspirate at times. So it's called fine needle aspiration cytology. So it is a very easy uh, technique and kind of very cost effective method to know uh, an initial, initial diagnosis it may not be definitive because biopsy is most, most, almost always the most definitive diagnosis. At least it gives an idea, so it can reduce the cost. It is for need a surgery, so you can avoid the pain, uh, the cost of surgery, and many other things in the hospital stay, etc. 
So it is kind of an office, office procedure and the patient virtually needs no rest or anything and he's totally fine after the procedure. He or she is totally fine after the procedure. And uh, this uh, and the report can be ready within uh, one or two days. So it's a very swift procedure and a very easy method and to get a, a kind of uh, almost specific or maybe at least a provisional diagnosis. So that is about FNAC. So this case, if you look at low power itself, you know that the cellularity is kind of very high. So thyroid lesions, the cellularity is very high. That itself is a red signal. So when you get a thyroid lesion, a high cellularity, you should know that uh, you should think about, oh, there is something wrong. And uh, when you, and you should think about many things, what will I look at higher power? So at this power, what we see is clarity. And we'll see what, all, what else we can see. So this is the whole thing is very kind of cellular. We can see the papillary, papillary kind of structures here. Then at this power, we can see the giant cells at this power. What do we, have, we appreciate? We appreciate that the cellularity is kind of very high. And move through the And one problem I think will be that it will be more slow on the screen when I but that won't be a big so if you just uh, scroll out you can see that there are papillae so actually at this low power itself we get kind of an idea of what the diagnosis is. this papillary carcinoma thyroid the papillary carcinoma thyroid basically got its name from this architecture this architecture is a papillary kind of architecture that gives it the name papillary carcinoma thyroid so Papillary carcinoma thyroid usually is seen in uh, age group about 20 to 50 or 25 to 50 years of age. And, um, and uh, usually one predisposing factor uh, for uh, you getting uh, papillary carcinoma thyroid is ionizing radiation, history of ionizing radiation in the first two decades of life. And uh, one uh, stark example can be the Chernobyl tragedy in Russia and uh, the kids who were exposed to this uh, radiation ionizing radiation, many of them developed uh, sadly uh, papillary carcinoma thyroid life so uh, if you if you're exposed to ionizing radiations uh, in initially in your life in the first two decades there is a predisposition uh, or there's a possibility that you might uh, get this carcinoma so that is about it so uh, papillary carcinoma the name is from that papillary kind of structure this is that kind of an age group and it is the most common carcinoma affecting the thyroid in fact almost 80 percent to 85 percent maybe of the thyroid of the entire carcinomas that affect thyroid is papillary carcinoma and it is another thing about it is it has a big chance of metastasizing to local lymph node neck lymph node so uh, it has a chance to metastasize to the uh, nearby lymph then what you can say about uh, thyroid carcinoma papillary carcinoma there is uh, uh, some gene uh, like a translocation and uh, a point mutation is one thing so translocations can cause a uh, red uh, gene fusion and uh, ntrk gene fusions and uh, uh, also there can be a point mutation of braf gene so these are the two uh, molecular pathways by which uh, papillary carcinoma thyroid is uh, does occur so that is about the molecular part then uh, what is there then we look at the cytology this is basically cytology we can we can have these features also in histopathology and and surgical pathology but this is basically cytology this example is going to be binary aspirate cytology and even in hnt or in histopathology we can see one main thing uh, about the papillary carcinoma is the nuclear feature so even though we name it by the papillary structures even if that is the kind of a signature the name that it is derived from it is not specific what is more important for the for diagnosing a papillary carcinoma thyroid is the nuclear feature so we have to look at this we have to look at the nuclear nuclei there are many features when we look at the nuclear feature that is what uh, used to diagnose definitely a uh, papillary carcinoma because there can be situations when there are no papillae like this, but there are nuclear features. Coming to nuclear features, what are the nuclear features? Nuclear features affect nuclear overcrowding, nuclear wing, nuclear. 
overlapping then internuclear pseudo inclusion these are the main thing nuclear enlargement and one thing we find in histopathology is the clear nucleus or as the orphan and but that is not they appreciate cytology cytology this uh, cells will be kind of nucleus will be kind of enlarged and granular a fine chromatin will be that is what corresponding to the orphan and nucleus histopathology and state what we see is large, enlarged nuclei with fine granular chromatin so we'll go dive into the case so this is the scanner power and we can appreciate all the cellularity as i told and we'll just go on to the next power another problem is when i am focusing it will be black it will be full dark so go to the power So the nuclear features is what we are uh, expecting to see at the higher power. Okay, this area has kind of so. Here, you can clearly see nuclei shows an inclusion like structure called intranuclear pseudo inclusion. We call it pseudo inclusion because it is not a true inclusion, uh, but it is a cytoplasm that is invaginating into the nuclei. So, what we have to know is in papillary carcinoma thyroid, the nuclei, the cell membrane of the nuclei is kind of very fragile because the cytoskeletal structure. The cytoskeletal structure of the nuclei in papillary carcinoma is kind of deranged because of that nuclear suppose a normal nucleus is like this in papillary carcinoma the nuclear structure the cell membrane and all kind of deranged and it'll it'll maybe fold in like so because of this folding we'll have a groove this is a groove we have we may have we may see many groove like structures and outside is a cytoplasm the cytoplasm may invaginate into these grooves so when we look at uh, when we cut sections we may see that there is a space like here so it's basically it's not an inclusion but that is cytoplasm invaginating into the nuclear grooves or nuclear irregular irregularities so that is what is nuclear pseudo inclusion true inclusion like you see in viral conditions but it is pseudo inclusion so that is what and maybe we'll just We'll go into other things. It is a little so green. Oh, that's a. Let me just. Uh, I see. So we have already seen. Uh, nuclear inclusion now what else we, we want to see or we expect to see we want to see nuclear crowding nuclear overlapping then nuclear grooving uh, another thing that we did not really it there was a nuclear enlargement it was there but we i forgot to mention about in here that we can Find it. So, if you look at this cell, there is some kind of a coffee bean appearance. Kind of shot. If you look at this nucleus, there is kind of a, a, a cross or cross a vertical line here, a groove. So that is. Called nuclear grooving. Nuclear grooving is basically there is a linear line like a coffee bean appearance. So that is a nuclear grooving. See the other finding. Yeah. We have seen nuclear grooving. We have seen.
Oh, again, I forgot to show. So here, if you look again, so here again, that groove is there. Nuclear actually large. Uh, to really appreciate the nuclear enlargement, we have to compare it with normal follicular cell. And uh, normal follicular, it, the nuclei will be more uh, larger than the follicular, the follicular thyroid. Uh, talking about follicular epithelial cells of thyroid, almost all the carcinomas of the thyroid arise, including papillary arise from the follicular cells except medullary carcinoma the T cell follicular C cell but I mean carcinoma so if you look here the nucleus is basically enlarged I don't know how much uh, you can appreciate that and in this case actually the cytoplasm is much uh, more than you that we expect in the in normal so here we can see appreciate a groove then nucleus is enlarged, here also is a groove. Then here you can see that nuclei are overlapping, that one nuclei is on top of the other. And again, here this is overcrowding basically. Uh, nuclei are crowded together. Here the nuclei are kind of apart, but here they, they, are, they are crowded together. That is nuclei overcrowding. And when the nucleus overcrowds and comes on top of the other, it's called overlapping. So we have seen nuclear crowding, nuclear overlapping, nuclear grooving, the nuclear enlargement, and the nuclear inclusion. Now in this slide, we'll see what else um, can be appreciated. Ah, there are many, many, many giant cells. That is one thing about the see of many times, lot of many times a lot of giant cells, multinucleated giant cells. This is a whole cell and many nucleus inside that single. A lot of multinuclear have seen uh, also. So basically, what is this papillae? Papillae are fibrovascular cores. Many times, at times, we can see the fibrovascular core. So I think this is one of the. Vessels. We can top of that. Uh, that's what uh, becomes papillae or papillae. Any papillae. What else uh, at low power? What else we appreciate is uh, uh, one thing. What you call the chewing gum colloid. This chewing gum colloid is kind of uh, uh, seen in papillary carcinoma thyroid, and at low power we can usually appreciate it. And uh, in this case, I don't think I have seen uh, kind of a stringy, chewed, uh, chewed uh, bubble gum like up here. So it's called chewing gum colloid or bubble gum. It's a very stretched, like a thick colloid, which is kind of appears stretched. So it is seen in a papillary carcinoma thyroid. Another thing that I didn't, fi I didn't find in this case is a samoma body. And what is samoma bodies? They are basically calcium, concentric uh, calcium, uh, laminated like structures. So that now, not in this case, but don't see this. This is kind of maybe you can call it, it is not exactly much of it, but you can appreciate stringy stretched out colloid kind of thick and like a, a bubble gum being stretched so that is uh, only a little bit of seen in this case but like but usually we can see that colloid this is the can it's not the best of the examples but this is 
kingdom color thick stretched out like kingdom kind of a follow it so i think that's uh enough i'll go to the low power maybe power the large So, so that will be enough about the mic. Problem I face is the mic. I'm going to say this side and joke in that side. I don't think it will be. We will go off that. Anyway, so now I'll just uh, show uh, the Samoma body. Samoma bodies are basically. What are they? They are concentric calcification. Also, so Samoma bodies, when in papillary structure, tip of the papillae, of the papillae, they in papillary structures, the tip of the papillae, they can just go up, undergo apoptosis and fall off, and they can calcify and form what you call as a Samoma. This is in many pathological conditions. Best examples out here is papillary carcinoma thyroid. But it can also be seen in normal and normal people like in choroid plexus um, that because choroid plexus has a papillary kind of architecture. Normally it can be, but usually this seen pathologically and And here again, just uh, at the low power, we can see this is such a big giant cell. So in papillary carcinoma, thyroid, FNAC, we can see a lot of giants. This particular case, there are lot and lots and lots. Anyway, I'll just show you the. Samoma body. This is basically not from a thyroid. This is a meningioma case, which is another area we can, especially meningiomatous meningi Many, many, many samoma bodies. Or samoma, sorry, not meningiomatous, samomatous meningi in which there are many, many, many samoma bodies. So I just showed this because this, this image I had taken while I was uh, a post graduation in Calcutt Medical College. And this image, I think, really exemplifies that lamination. Can see that laminated structure of the SAM bodies is the calcified, um, calcified laminated structure. This is the, this is what we call the SAMOMA body. Uh, means the left the left image which is highlighted, circled one. And so I think that's about it. Uh, we can get the uh, again just revising the whole thing. In papillary carcinoma thyroid, what we see microscopically, the nuclear features are more important than anything. And this is nuclear enlargement, nuclear, nuclear overlapping, then overcrowding, then pseudo inclusions. Then the other things can be the stringy or thick chewing uh, like colloid, then samoma bodies, then multinuclear giant cells can be seen. But multinuclear giant cells can be seen in many conditions, just one among them. And um, usually, papillary carcinoma has a kind of good program, and they have a propensity for uh, lymph node metastasis. I think that's about it. Hopefully, uh, I think it was cool, uh, and hope to continue this series called uh, "Through Epithelial Eyes: How a Pathologist Was About Seeing a Case Look at Through the Microscope Diagnosis." I understand that it took a lot of time because the focusing uh, was not a smooth and controlled. Hope I can sort out a solution. Thank you.